Today we're tackling a common question that I get asked by many Australian expats right here in Singapore. And that is, can I tap into the equity in my Australian property to buy a home or to buy an investment property right here in Singapore? Hi there, I'm Jared Brown, Australian expat financial planner working with Australian expats here in Singapore and around the world to make the most of their money. Today we're tackling the question, can I use the equity in my property in Australia to buy a home right here in Singapore? We've all seen the dramatic or incredibly uh, rapid increase in rental prices here in Singapore. Many have experienced anywhere from a 30 to an 80, 90, 100% increase in their rental price over the last two years, and whilst markets are starting to cool, it's certainly not as rapid as some would like and some would appreciate. Now naturally this has led many to start considering, well, is it actually time to go and buy a home here in Singapore? Now with additional buyer stamp duty at 60% and all of the other holding costs and then seller's stamp duty to consider, often the, the costs are incredibly expensive and financially for the majority of people it doesn't make sense to do so. But in some cases it can, particularly if you, you might be PR and therefore that stamp duty is less of a hurdle. You might be American and therefore, again, those purchase costs are more subdued. So let's come back to the question at hand. Can I tap into the equity in my Australian property to fund the deposit or purchase costs on my property here in Singapore? And the answer is, in many cases, yes you can. So let's just consider an example. Let's say that I have a property in Brisbane or Melbourne or Sydney, it doesn't really matter, let's assume Sydney. And that property is today worth $2 million. Let's say that I have a $500,000 mortgage on that property. So $2 million minus my $500,000, I have $1.5 million in equity that is effectively my net position in that property. Now the banks won't let me borrow 100% of it, but many times they will allow me to go to 80%. Now 80% of $2 million is 1.6 million. We know that I already have a mortgage of 500 and my ability to borrow is up to 1.6, which means there's $1.1 million of equity that I could potentially tap into. So how would I actually go about that? Well, there's really two ways. On the one hand, we could set up an equity access loan or a line of credit for the 1.1 or for whatever amount up to that limit we want to be able to access. Obviously we need to be able to service the loan, go through, that, through the application and be mindful of the interest rate that would apply. Now the benefit of that scenario is you will only pay interest on the amount that you actually draw down. So there is some benefit in doing it that way. The other option is to simply increase the loan balance. So instead of 500,000, I increase it via a refinance from 500 to 1.6 million. Now my repayments might be on the 1.6, or if it's interest only, I could have that effectively fully offset or undrawn until I decide to buy my home here in Singapore. Now that I've set up that facility or increased the loan balance, I can then simply transfer that money, so that 1.1 or million dollars or whatever I need from Australia over to Singapore, of course using a good FX broker so I don't get ripped off on the exchange rate, and then use those funds to cover the deposit, the purchase costs on my property here in Singapore. Now of course there are many things we need to be mindful of, and this is not often a strategy we would recommend, in fact many times we would probably go the other way, but it is a strategy that is possible if you wish to consider it. Now the reasons that we're not a huge fan of this strategy most of the time <clears throat> is often we are muddying the waters of that debt. So in Australia now we have part of it that is deductible, part of it that is not. We now also have a currency or FX exposure risk with the fact that part of that loan is in Australian dollars used to buy a Singapore asset. Therefore, whatever the Singapore dollar does relative to the Australian dollar is going to have a material impact potentially on our net financial position. So plenty to think about there, but if you are considering buying a home here in Singapore, don't ignore the possibility, whilst it may not be the most uh, efficient or sensible way to go about it, don't ignore the possibility of tapping into that equity 
down in Australia. Thank you for tuning in. Drop me a note with any questions you have. Do remember to like, subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you in the next one.